I am very excited to be here. I would love for you guys to um, comment when you're getting married or if you're already married, that's great too. You can tell me when you got married. Um, but we'll just do that. We'll give everybody maybe another like 30 seconds to get in here and then we will start going with any questions you guys have. Um, anything about weddings, about photography, about the wedding world, about like what it is like to run a wedding business, anything I'm happy to answer. Oh, we got a lot of 2020s. I feel like 2020 is going to be a really popular year for weddings. Lots of fall and summer 2020. Super exciting. Nice. I think a lot of people wanted 2020 because it sounds so nice. It's even. It's like a double digit thing. So definitely feel like next year is going to be very, very busy. Very cool. Getting engagement photos next month. That is super exciting. I've got lots of great videos all about engagement sessions, which hopefully you've already seen them, but if you haven't, you can. Um, so first question, my friend is an amateur photographer and she offered to do our engagement photos. Any tips on how I can make this run smoothly? That is, I don't know. I can't say for sure. I don't know what their level of skill is. Um, if they're not that experienced, then I would definitely say watch all my videos um, choose your outfits wisely. I've got a great video on that. But without really knowing what their skill level and experience is like, I can't really speak too much to that. But I hope that at least my videos will help you prepare like, the best that you can prepare. Um, is it worth buying fancy robes for getting ready photos or can my photographer just skip that and jump to use all of us in our dresses. Um, either way, I wore a nice robe because I have a really cool friend who makes robes. It's called Robed with Love. Um, she does really beautiful robes and she gifted me one from a photo shoot. And so I wore one and honestly, I just told my bridesmaids to wear something cute pajama-like. My bridesman just wore jeans and a button down shirt. And we took a couple of photos like popping champagne and a few while I was getting my makeup done. But then the rest was in the dress when they were in their dresses. So you can totally do that too if you don't feel like getting robes for everybody or trying to find them yourself. Okay, trying to get my guest list down and it's so hard. Suggestions, yes. Uh, so we wanted a smaller wedding because we wanted to be able to talk to everybody. And also I wanted the budget to visually go further. And we ended up with 56 people. We invited 120. And some of the people we kind of wheedled off the list were people where we were on the fence. Like, should we add them? I haven't really seen them in a long time. Or are they going to think it's weird that I'm all of a sudden inviting them? Some people like that. Um, that we were able to get rid of. Um, if you have coworkers, I don't really have coworkers, but if you have coworkers and you're not that close with them, you could cut them off. Um, if your parents have tried to put a lot of people on the list, I know that's a very common thing. Maybe see if you can have them take a couple people off that you might not know and don't care about having there. I strictly told my parents, you can have two couples that you can invite, but I have to know who they are. And it worked out well, like the people they wanted to put on there were people I already wanted. So I hope that helps. Um, just think of the people that, I don't know, maybe you wouldn't miss if they weren't there. <laughs> not to say that you don't like them, but that's a good way to think about it. Okay, so the next question is, um, best tips to get more comfortable in front of the camera. So one thing I always recommend is if you do drink alcohol, have one cocktail beforehand, or you can drink it during your shoot. I incorporate a lot of champagne and cocktails into my shoots anyway. If you not drink or just don't feel like doing that, um, one thing I would say is just to try to focus on other things leading up to the shoot that are fun. So if you're worried about the shoot all day, you're going to go into it feeling tense. So just relax. Also, if you have the opportunity to have a call with your photographer ahead of time to get to know them better. I think that will put you at ease too. And then when you show up to the shoot, at least for me, I don't start shooting right away. I talk to my couples for a few minutes, like, you know, just some chit chat. And then I tell them what to expect. And then I think it's a really great thing. If you can start out your shoot by walking, that makes people feel more loose than if they have to go straight into like a still posed photo. So you can ask if you can start with walking shots and that might be really helpful. Okay, starting to get a lot of questions come in. I'm gonna to try to keep up with everything. So let's see, um, best tips for managing mis mismatch, that's so hard to say, dresses without micromanaging, manage, oh my gosh, micromanaging bridesmaids. So what I did was I simply showed my bridesmaids a sheet of my color palette. I just emailed it to them so they knew exactly what the colors looked like. Because if you say blue, blue means different things to different people. So I would show them actual like virtual swatches of your color palette and say, hey, 
just buy something in this color palette, send me an option or two for approval or review, whatever words you want to use. And then that way you can okay them. So they have the freedom to go out and choose. They know what colors they're supposed to get. Um, specify the length if you want shorter cocktail dresses or longer, and then just let them bring some options to you. And then you can pick your favorites. I think that that's a really great way to go about it where it's the best of both worlds. So how much in advance of the wedding day should I reach out to my photographer with information about family photo groups, timeline questions? That is a great question. I personally send out a questionnaire to my brides about two months before their wedding to collect that information. Um, other photographers might not be as proactive as I am, so you might need to send it to them. I would say probably no later than a month before, just so they have time, because if you end up throwing some curveballs at them with really, really long family groupings lists, then they're going to still need time to tell the planner or or work with the timeline to make sure they can still squeeze it in. So if you throw that at them like a week in advance, there might not be time to change the timeline if that makes sense. Let's see. I am not buying champagne for my couples. I have them bring it. Um, if I were to buy all my couples champagne, I'd run out of all of my money. So I have them bring it. I also don't know what kind they like. Sometimes we actually just start at a cocktail bar or a restaurant. I try to make my engagement sessions personalized. So if I know that they love craft cocktails, I will choose a really photogenic cocktail bar and then we'll just order them from there. So it's kind of a mix of sometimes they bring champagne in their own glasses or sometimes we order from a restaurant or a bar. So the next question, how much DIY is too much? I think when you get to the point where you're starting to resent doing the DIY and you're just wanting to hire somebody to do it. Um, I think it's honestly about how much you can handle. If you have a lot of free time and, and you feel like you can do those with patience and they're not going to stress you out, then you can do more. But if you are a super busy person, then maybe not as much. Um, but I think that that's really all about your threshold of where your stress, your time and your patience are going to come into play. My floral budget is pretty small. Should I budget family members, corsages and boutonnieres? So what I actually did, I did not order any like grandmothers um, or fathers boutonnieres, grandmother corsages, mother corsages. I actually did not even have my bridesmaids have bouquets simply because there was no ceremony. So it would have been weird if I'd had a ceremony, I would have done it. But I think it's really nice to just cut out like the mom and dad and grandma, little tiny flower things. And it doesn't save you that much, but you can at least save or you can reallocate that into it, like making a bigger centerpiece on your head table. So I would say cut out the small stuff. Also think about what's going to be photographed the most, which is typically the bridal bouquet. That's probably the one floral piece that's going to have the most photos. So if your flower budget is on the smaller side, I would say maybe invest a little more heavily in your bridal bouquet, maybe go smaller for the bridesmaids. Um, and then for your head table, you can always deck out your head table and have all the other guest tables be more minimal in flowers and tell your photographer this and say, hey, just focus Focus your photos on the head table. That's a really great tip. No matter if you have a small or even a medium sized flower budget is decking out the head table, focus the photos on that. Okay, posing tips. I actually have a whole video on posing that would be great to um, look at, but one really great tip that I tell everybody is shoulders back and down. I have a habit of slouching, which you can't see in my black shirt, which is nice and strategic, but shoulders back and down is a huge thing. Also, sometimes people see the camera and they wanna go like this. They wanna be like further from the camera. That's gonna create a double chin, even if you're a small person. I have a lot of men who do this, so chin forward and down. So you can see this is how I might normally sit. And going forward a little bit, it like looks less weird when I'm not on the camera, but it carves out that jawline more. So that's a really great tip too that a lot of people don't think about. Uh, let's see, let's see. Do the photographer and videographer coordinate with each other prior to the wedding? Sometimes um, I kind of set the timeline with the planner. Usually the videographer just follows along with it. I have a lot of videographers who on the wedding day are like, what's happening next? And I'm like, did you get a timeline? So and usually not ahead of time. They just kind of go with the flow. They'll get the timeline. But I think that most of the time the photographers are kind of setting the timing and videographers usually just follow along. But if it's somebody I have not worked with, either they will reach out to me to say hello or vice versa. Um, let's see, what is my favorite, most visually impactful decor item that I've seen? Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh man, probably escort card displays. Um, not only because they're really in right now, like really elaborate displays, which you can totally DIY. We did not, but you can. 
That I love because not only do blogs love it and it's really fun to share, but it's also the first thing your guests see when they come into your reception. So if you can start that experience off with a really cool escort card display, which means the same thing as like a seating chart, but there's individual pieces with the person's name and table on it. I think that's a really fun thing. People get extremely creative with those. My own wedding planner, Amorology, she's done so many cool ones. If you guys go to her Instagram, you'll see a bunch. Her husband backup backdrops also on Instagram is great for looking at cool ideas for backdrops. Let's see. Um, fake bouquet for the bouquet toss. No, sorry. There's a siren going by. We live in kind of an urbanish part of town. Okay. It's gone. Um, usually it's not a fake bouquet for the toss. It's usually a smaller, like they call it a toss bouquet. So sometimes a bride will order a small version that's called a toss bouquet, or she'll just use a bridesmaid's bouquet because you're not going to do anything else with it. Um, typically not the large bridal bouquet. It would just be too big. So typically a specific toss bouquet or bridal bouquet. Uh, next question, um, lacrosse girl, I'm reusing the bridesmaids bouquets as centerpiece. My florist recommends it because it's sustainable, more affordable. Yeah, that's great. Um, just make sure that somebody is going to get them in there on time for the photographer to shoot and that the photographer knows. Now that's something that I would notice if there were empty vases on the table. But when I first started, that's not something I might have noticed. And I might have started to shoot the tables and then the flowers come in. You're like, oh my God, I got to shoot it again. Or maybe you don't have time. So just let your photographer know and make sure that somebody's getting those quickly so that they do have time to shoot them on the table. Let's see. Are no DJ weddings really that boring? I don't know if I've actually had a wedding without a DJ. I think maybe a few really tiny weddings, like 20 person weddings, and they just had an iPod. And I think that works. That said, if you are really wanting to make sure that you get people on the dance floor and keep them there, then it's very exciting. A DJ or a band can definitely help with that. Um, it's just something about having that live presence to feel the audience and know what songs are going to be working next. Whereas a playlist, like you could have a song in there that kind of kills the vibe. So a DJ has more control, but I wouldn't say that iPod, I don't even know if anybody uses an iPod anymore. Well, like I'm in like 2006 right now, but an iPhone or something of the sort, um, as long as you have a good playlist, then it's not going to be super boring. Um, especially if you also want to include some games or activities for your guests too. It's a great way to kind of bridge that gap. How do you choose who sits where when making a seating chart? Great question. It feels like a big puzzle that's really hard to solve and then you solve it and you feel so amazing. So what I did, my planner uses a software called Aisle Planner that let me drag and drop people around. But what you can do if you don't have access to something like that is look at your guest list and group them by husband's friends, bride's friends, like whatever, parents, friends, uh, mother's side of the family and see how many people you have in each group and try to fit like eight or 10 or how many ever many people can fit at that table from that group there. And you can throw in some stragglers. I think as long as somebody knows at least one other person at the table and you put them near them, then that's okay for your like little randos. But I would look at it by types of people, coworkers table. Um, we had a table that was just San Diego people and they all sat together and that was great. And then I had a table for my dad's side of the family, table for my mom's side of the family. So that's kind of how we did that. And I think that's the best way to go about it. Um, anything to take in consideration for a summer wedding? Great question, Elizabeth. I have a video coming out Thursday all about hot summer weddings. So that is going to be really great to watch. Um, I'm the bride and the wedding planner. Any tips for enjoying the day but keeping the day organized? Or is that too much to ask? Yes. <laughs> At least get a day of coordinator to come in. It's going to be so helpful because the last thing you want to do on your wedding day is worry about logistics or things being set up. I've had some brides in the past who did not have a coordinator and they always tell me afterwards, I wish I had just spent the money and hired somebody because I was setting up on the wedding day. Nobody knew how to do it. So I would definitely say, try to get somebody to be a day of coordinator. You can plan all the way up into a couple weeks out from the wedding, find a day of coordinator to be there. There's so so, so, so helpful. Like they are seriously so worth the money, even though you don't get any things out of it. It's nice to have somebody there who can deal with any issues that come up and then just make sure the day runs smoothly. Up lighting, yay or nay. I don't think it's my style, but I keep being told it's worth it. This is like one of those things where I meet planners and some are like, I love them. Some say they hate them. I like them in a big space. I like them when they are amber colored. 
Okay. I find that amber is probably the most elegant color. It definitely doesn't look Halloweenish, which I know has been a concern for some people. As long as it's not orange, it's more of like an amber. I think that's really pretty. It could add dimension to the space, especially if your venue is really dark. The background of your photos are basically going to be like a black abyss. So it's nice to just have some visual interest with up lights. You don't have to have too many. You can just have them every so often. I kind of like them for receptions. I think they're nice. We had some. We had some in the little pavilion that we danced in. Kind of sets the mood. It's really, really fun, I think. Okay. Um, oh, hi, Madison. <laughs> Excited for our wedding together. Um, Madison in here assists me on weddings, and we have a really fun wedding on October 5th. Okay, Jessica asks, my wedding and wedding party is small, three bridesmaids and three groomsmen. Should I have a second photographer? I think so. I think when it comes to second photographers, I would rather have one than not have one and regret it. Um, bridal party size doesn't have too much of an impact on whether you need one. It's more like your guest count and your timeline. If you have multiple locations, absolutely. If you have more than like 20, 30 guests, absolutely. It's better to have it and have all of those different things covered because Photographer can't be in multiple places at once. So for example, if they're shooting your portraits during cocktail hour, nobody's covering the guests at cocktail hour. I think without a second shooter, you're gonna have far less guest photos. You'll still have some, but you won't have as many. I think it's always a good idea. The only time where I will accept a wedding without a second shooter is if it's like 15 people or less and I'll have an assistant with me and that's about it. But it's really great to have for larger, even medium sized weddings. What's the best way to approach telling guests to please not take wedding table centerpieces? Oh, that's a tough one. So <laughs> this is a strange question. I would say maybe if you have a planner or a day of coordinator, have them be on the lookout. It's so interesting to me that people would just take them without asking. We gave some of ours away to local people because we couldn't take them home. Like my cats would eat them. We were going on our honeymoon, but we knew that we could just take it out of the vessel it was in, which we rented, did not purchase. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Or if it's not flowers or something like that, hopefully people won't take it. But I would say alert someone at the venue or your planner that that could be an issue so they can watch out for it and make sure nobody takes them home, whether it's uh, innocent or not. Okay, what are the biggest things to keep in mind when getting married out of state? So one, again, I'm going to say this so many times, having a planner is so helpful because they're going to be able to take care of a lot of those things for you. Even if they're not in state, they know what's going on so they can think of all those things. Um, make sure that you are, of course, getting into town early enough. Don't cut it close, especially if it is in a season where flight delays are very common, so a lot of rain or snow. And I feel like, honestly, choose a hotel that you're going to feel really comfortable at and make sure it's somewhere your guests can be. Because I find for a lot of out-of-state weddings, people do a lot more with their guests. They kind of make it a mini destination vacation. So just a hotel that maybe has some activities like a pool or something fun to keep everybody busy for the weekend. So that's my kind of short answer on that. Um, Self-care tips leading up to the wedding and on the day of what I do to stay present and feel good. So I'm assuming you're asking from a bride's perspective, not how I prepare as a photographer. I honestly just made sure that I had gotten all of the logistical things taken care of at least a week in advance because I didn't want vendors emailing me the week of. The ones who did, I was like, just email my planner from here on out. She's the person to talk to. So that was really nice to have. Now, I did have a lot of relatives texting me like, what's the weather like this weekend? What should I wear? And I'm like, these things were on the wedding website for months. Like, I don't know why you didn't read this and why you're asking the bride about the weather, but it happens. So maybe be prepared for some questions from family members. And if you do have a planner or coordinator, have like a note in your phone with a template that's just like, oh, like we're busy with wedding stuff. Um, feel free to call or text my planner, blah, blah, blah. And just shoot like anytime you can just get rid of people and send them to somebody else. That is super helpful. Um, I also made sure I was still exercising. I wasn't staying up too late. I was hydrating a lot. And I think that that for me was grounding and then just focusing on the excitement and not worrying about the day of because I knew that we had hired vendors who would take care of everything for us. Okay, next question. Considering a no ceremony wedding, awesome, we did that, we loved it, nobody missed it, it was great for us, um, so I like that. <laughs> I like the idea of getting married at City Hall on the day of the reception, is that too crazy for the photography timeline? I think it depends on if you want it photographed or not. You'll just have to make sure that you're working it in on the timeline. And then maybe you have just some family members go or maybe you do it privately. Um, I think it can definitely work. We went 
honestly, several months ahead of time just to take care of it. But I think you can definitely make it work. Just know that you'll need to need to be putting in padding in case things run late. At least for our city hall, there was a lot of waiting despite the fact that we did have an appointment. So I would just be careful of that. I've done some city hall only weddings that took like an hour longer than they were supposed to. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. Resources for knowing how much alcohol I should actually buy. That's a great question. I feel like there's a lot of really good resources on the Knot or Martha Stewart, something like that. Um, but I think also assess your crowd. Do you have a heavy drinking crowd? Do you have a crowd that just drinks like a, one or two drinks? Or do you have like half the family doesn't drink at all and the rest does? That's going to be a helpful thing to think of. Um, I know at least for desserts, they say at least two to three uh, little desserts per person. So that's desserts. I'm not so sure about alcohol. Um, but yeah, I would look up some other resources. I'm sorry, I don't know that one specifically. Let's see, what are some non-traditional engagement locations? Not a beach or park, I live in New York. Love that question. So for me, at least, I send my couples a questionnaire that ask them what their hobbies are. Um, do they like going out to breweries? Do they like golfing? Do they like going on hikes together? Do they like taking their dogs on walks? I also want to know if there's any specific locations that are meaningful to them. So where was your first date? Where do you spend a lot of time? Um, where do you just like to go? Do um, museums and architecture interest you? Great, let's shoot in Balboa Park. Even though a lot of people shoot there, I try to make it unique. So I think that if you think in terms of what might be special and meaningful rather than just what's simply pretty, then it's going to be a lot more unique to you. I mean, we did Balboa Park and I really didn't want to shoot there because I was like, everybody does it there. But then I thought we spend so much time there. We live right on the park now. And we just chose spots in the park that were not as commonly used and places that meant the most to us. And so in the end, it didn't feel like overly done or cheesy. It felt just right for us. Okay. Um, is a kid's corner worth it? And then the next question also asks about kids. Um, people always talk about no kids, but I will be having several nephews and kitties there. Okay, so I think most of my weddings are kid-free these days, which is fine. Um, we had kid-free, and I don't think anybody who had kids wanted to bring them anyway. They wanted an adult's night off. But one thing I will say is that it is really helpful to make sure that, that you might have like a babysitter type figure there. Because a lot of times what I notice, and this is a safety concern, is that all the adults are enjoying the wedding as they should be. And as like, I would want to be too. And then all the kids are like off running around. And especially if it's an outdoor wedding, sometimes I see kids and I'm like, oh my gosh, that kid's about to fall into a ditch. Like nobody's around. And that's making me very nervous. Also, I get really nervous if kids are throwing around like balls or running around because I don't want them to bump into my lighting gear and make my flash fall on the ground and break because that's like $700. So if you can have some sort of like a chaperone type person, and you can hire these people. And um, there's all kinds of child care for event services, whether the kids are going to be present at the wedding or like in a hotel room or another room of the venue. That's a great way because you want to make sure they're safe and also that their parents aren't so distracted with watching them that they can't enjoy the wedding. Because that is one thing that all parents should be able to do is enjoy a night out. Okay, let's see. Um, thank you about my makeup. Yes, I think I said earlier I had some portraits done for my website, which is why I'm a little bit more like glamorous today than I would normally be. Uh, okay, venue coordinator said don't put sweetheart table with the back to the window. She said great for photos during daylight, but at night you'll only see the camera flash reflection in the window. That is one smart coordinator. <laughs> I love them so much. Yes, that is true. Um, when I go into a wedding and the sweetheart table or the head uh, table is right in front of glass or window mirror or whatever, that is always a concern. Um, basically, it is a really big challenge for me to have my lighting positioned at a certain angle. Um, I shoot with something that's called off-camera flash, so it's the flash is not on my camera, which makes it easier to avoid those reflections. But I'm not sure what your photographer does. But yes, it can make it really hard because you will have that reflection. If not in all of your photos, definitely in some of your photos. Even when I try to hide it my best, there's some angles I want to shoot where it is impossible not to get it in there. So if you want to have your table there, one option you could do would be to put some sort of backdrop behind you just to break up that glass. And that is going to be really helpful. Um, so you can have it in the same place, but you can make sure it's not crazy reflection on the windows. Wondering if I should have kept my, if I should have my cake cutting announced by DJ or kept just us while guests are um, partying, pros and cons of both. Okay, most of the time these days, I'm seeing what we call silent cake cutting, where maybe they grab the parents. David and I went over by ourselves and it was nice. Like, you know, it just felt like for us, and then I ate the whole cake piece, not the whole cake, but I could have eaten the whole cake, but I ate the whole piece of cake and then I went back into the stuff. Um, 
when you have it announced, sometimes guests come in and they can make it really hard for the photographer to get a spot. The guests always seem to find that their photos are more important than ours. So sometimes it can be tough to weasel in there. I try to run over there as fast as possible to like secure a spot. And I'm like, people don't get in front of me. That's what I try to do. It does not always happen. That's one con. It's not a huge deal. Um, I think honestly, it's personal choice. If you don't want to make a big deal about it, especially if people are dancing on the dance floor and you don't want to kill that vibe and you want to keep them there, then have a silent one for sure. Ideas for fun wedding games and lawn games. I see a lot of cornhole. I see large Jenga sets. Um, what else have I seen? Bocce ball, croquet. Those are all really popular ones. Um, I mean, you could also have like a checkers set, something like that. Or if your friends are into chess and maybe they are, then you could have like a little chess set. I don't know, something like that. But I would th say, think of things that your group of people might want to do. David wanted a croquet set. Only like three people played it, but that's totally fine. Somebody enjoyed it. Um, let's see, maybe someone asks already because I'm a little late, any advice about winter weddings? Yes. <laughs> so I have a wedding, um, not a wedding. Oh my gosh. I have a video coming out on Thursday that is going to be all about really hot and really cold weddings. So that is going to be one to watch. That'll give you guys tips on how to deal with the weather, especially if you're going to be outside. Bridal party portraits done before the ceremony thoughts. Um, yes, I always try to do that. Um, if there is a first look, I will get all of the bridal party done before the ceremony. That way bridal party can just leave after the ceremony and go enjoy cocktail hour. If there's no first look, what I am going to get out of the way to save time during cocktail hour is do the bride with all bridesmaids, the bride with each bridesmaid. And then my second shooter is doing the same thing with the guys elsewhere. So I will always do that if there's not a first look, just so we can salvage some of the cocktail hour time for more couples portraits. Uh, have you ever been to a boring wedding? <laughs> what would be signs of a boring, lifeless wedding? Oh man, boring wedding. I would say I've never been to a wedding that stood out to me as particularly boring. I go to a lot of weddings that are great, but they're not like over the top, super exciting, super memorable. And I think it's just because a wedding is a wedding. Like, especially if you're following the typical timeline of things and the typical traditions, it's something people have experienced before. Now, having said that, really good music is a really, really, really good thing to have to ensure that your wedding definitely won't be boring. Um, but I would say most weddings I go to are just they're like fun weddings, but they're not like extremely fun. But I don't think I've ever been to a really boring wedding, um, which is good. <laughs> it's a great sign. Usually when people are fed and given alcohol, they're pretty happy. So typically not very bored. All right. What's my favorite cake or dessert? Um, I have mm, probably three favorite desserts in my life. Uh, the first one is Georgetown Cupcakes Banana Split Cupcake. They only make them in August, I think, and they're so delicious. I used to live in D.C., so I would go get them then. Now I special order them, and it's really expensive. It's like $60 for 12 cupcakes, but I do it once a year, and that's one of my favorites. Um, my other favorite is Nothing Bunt Cakes Red Velvet Cake, which we did have at our wedding, which was really delicious, and we had leftovers, and I ate it like all week after the wedding. The third is from Vaughn's Supermarket, and it is their red velvet cake, which is shockingly really good. They have a couple different kinds. The kind I like is like the long kind. It's really good, and I'm going to buy it tomorrow to celebrate the news that I've been teasing you guys about and will reveal very, very soon. How's married life going? Great. Pretty much the same as the last like <laughs> seven years we've been together. Um, nothing really different. Honestly, we were living together for several years. We got married. Now it's just like official and legal. Um, I did not change my name. I don't know if I will. Maybe I will at some point. Um, but yeah, pretty much the same. I'm not a very sentimental romantic person. So <laughs> it's just like a pretty practical move. But the wedding was very exciting. Um, so that's all the questions I have so far. Um, if you guys have a couple more questions, definitely get those in now. We are about to hit the 30 minute mark. I will stay for a little bit longer if you guys have a bunch of questions, um, but otherwise we will wrap up in just a few. Um, what are things that you would suggest not leaving till the last minute? Definitely booking your vendors. Some people will try to book vendors the last second. I recently had a couple call me and they were like, we're getting married in a week. Can we book you? And I was like, no. I'm not doing that. <laughs> like I can't do that. So don't leave it to the last second for your vendors. Um, also make sure that all of your little things are done. You can use checklists like from the Knot or Zola or other wedding planning sites to make sure you stay on track, but make sure any DIY items, any sort of um, escort card names, those are all prepared ahead of time because you don't want to be doing that in the days before your wedding because you're going to be extremely busy. So also if you have any beauty appointments, set them a couple days ahead of the wedding. Uh, so that you don't feel really stressed trying to get everything done the day before. 
best cake alternatives. Um, I have seen people do a cheesecake and I don't mean a cheesecake. I mean like an actual cake made of cheese wheels. I've seen that. That was kind of cool. They really love cheese. I have seen uh, mostly like a lot of donut bars. I feel like that's kind of slowly going out. Cupcakes, um, just small desserts. If you guys find my wedding, we had um, what we call a dummy cake. So the cake that like looked really pretty and fancy was a dummy cake, which is styrofoam and then like covered in fondant and icing and everything because we wanted to keep it. And then we had nothing but cakes to actually serve and eat and then we had a lot of little desserts like mini pies mini s'mores chocolate covered oreos and we had mini passion fruit tartlets so stuff like that is a nice variety so if you don't like cake just have a bunch of little desserts and then that way everybody has their pick make sure you have at least one gluten-free and one nut-free option um, if you have a lot of vegan friends have a vegan option as well so it's just nice to have all of your bases covered um mentioned that I went to DC for grad school. I studied international relations. So I was going to go into the human rights field, working with refugees. And then I shot my first wedding and I said, that's what I want to do. So I finished up my studies and my internships and then I went full time with weddings. So a lot of time and money spent. Parents are super happy about that. <laughs> um, as a photographer, do you like to be there the whole time the ladies are getting ready or towards the middle? Um, so I actually like to, gosh, it's complicated. I like to count back from the ceremony um, but basically, if you're having your first look or your ceremony, I want the bride in the gown at least 25 minutes before the first look or before the ceremony. And then I want to be there about an hour and a half before she gets into her gown, sometimes two hours, depending on if she's got a lot of details. But I want warm up time. I want to be able to show up and say hello to everybody. And hopefully everybody's excited to see me and then shoot the details. I want to have time because if I feel rushed, then I can't get as many creative things out of my brain. So I want to make sure that I'm there early enough to warm up for me and then to have all of the bridesmaids warm up to me because the bride already knows me. She's great, but the bridesmaids have never met me. So if the photographer is ever asking for more time than you think you want for photos, just listen to why they maybe want it because it might be really helpful for them and thus very helpful for you. Wedding favors, worth it, or as Alicia would say, F it bucket. I love Alicia. Um, I've been on her show so many times now. We met in London in June, which was great. So I think honestly, favors are not necessary. If you wanna have favors, you've got room in the budget, great. If you're looking to cut some stuff out of your budget, favors can be like the first thing to go. Um, I find that a lot of favors don't get taken home. Edible favors are great. People usually love edible favors. Even if it's like a little bottle of champagne or some chocolate, something extra, that's a really great thing to do that they're probably going to use. Um, if you're just giving your guests like, and it's really cute, but if you're giving your guests like a wine glass monogrammed with your wedding date, just know that they're going home and they're now going to have like one random wedding glass. Like that bothers some people who are really OCD like me and want a cohesive set. So I, I mean, I would keep it around, but I, I don't know. Like it's just... It's up to you. If you want to give them something cool, give them something cool. But if you want to make sure that it does get utilized, edible is probably the best way to go. Uh, let's see. What's the most unique engagement photos I've ever done? Ooh, that's a great question. Oh, man. Probably a really long time ago, I did engagement photos at the beach here in San Diego with a couple who loves to skateboard. So I photographed them skateboarding down the boardwalk, which is really cute. Um, that's probably one of my most unique, just because it was so adventurous and activity-based. But I have been really dying to like get a couple who really loves tennis and is willing to dress up in like really cute, like kind of preppy, but not preppy, like very stylish tennis gear. That's like something that's on my bucket list. I, I don't know why. I just have this vision of doing something cool with like really cute athletic gear and having it be just really chic and I don't know, editorial like. So if you're one of those people, call me. Let's see, dessert table or large cake for 200 people. That is totally up to you. Um, if you do have a large cake, you could do the tiers with different flavors. So you have some for everybody. Personally, I find at weddings with cake, if you have um, multiple cake flavors, if you have like chocolate, red velvet, and vanilla, the chocolate and red velvet go the first. Vanilla sits around a lot longer. Apparently people don't like vanilla as much, at least what, from what I've seen, but small desserts are great. And then if you do have anything left over, have your catering team or your planner box it up. That's what we did. And I pretty much ate desserts nonstop for the four days after our wedding. Um, Honestly, it was like way too much sugar for me, but it was great. <laughs> uh, let's see. As a photographer, is there any makeup um, makeup details that don't photograph well? Makeup done by somebody who doesn't know what they're doing cannot blend makeup. That's probably the biggest thing I've seen with makeup. I have actually had to ask some hair and makeup artists, like, 
hey, can you blend out the bride's jawline? Like it's not blended. Like I will actually ask her that when the bride goes to the bathroom or like isn't paying attention because I can't Photoshop that. And I want to make sure that like she looks great, but sometimes the hair makeup artists just don't do the best job. Um, that is one of the areas of the wedding that I would say, don't be afraid to splurge a little on because the way you look is in probably 90 plus percent of your photos. And if it doesn't look really, really great, and you don't feel great in it. You're not going to like your photos. So hair and makeup is a really important place. Make sure you get great referrals. Ask your photographer. I have a couple of different hair and makeup artists that I know do a flawless job every single time. With hair, it's exposed bobby pins. So bobby pins usually, unless they're part of like a statement thing, should be hidden. I see a lot of hair makeup artists, really hair artists, hairstylists, hair artists, whatever, hairstylists who are like have bobby pins all over the place and I can see them all. And again, I can't Photoshop something like that. So that's a big thing. And I usually only see that with um, not all, but mostly it happens with lower end hair and makeup artists. I've never seen that from one of the more medium budget to plus. Um, again, ask for referrals from your photographer and they will probably know because they have to stare at it and say like, oh, I wish these weren't in here. I wish this was blended. Um, what's your opinion on eyelash extensions? Do they affect photography? That's totally personal preference. Um, I love false lashes. They are on my eyes right now. I love the look of them. I wish my lashes looked like this every single day. Um, for actual eyelash extensions, I do not find that I want to spend the time or money on actual eyelash extensions, and I'm worried that they would degrade my natural eyelashes. So that's why I have not done those. Um, I would say some of my brides have eyelash extensions and thus don't need false lashes on their wedding day, and that's great. Um, but then most of them just honestly do the strip lashes, or if that's too much for them, they'll have the makeup artist place individual lashes so it's some extra um so i think that if you do a little bit more makeup than you're comfortable with in person it shows up on camera better because here it doesn't even look like as much makeup as i have on actually in person so the camera kind of takes away a little bit of the intensity which is a good thing so it's okay to go a little bit more than what you might be comfortable with because it will show up better in the photos um, are there difficulties photographing outdoors after sunset? No, honestly, it's pretty much the same for me, whether I'm indoors or outdoors. For an outdoor wedding, make sure that you do have sufficient lighting, whether it's market lights, up lights, some sort of a light wash, they call it. Make sure that people can actually see. I use off-camera flash. Um, I use flash in every single outdoor or indoor scenario for reception. So for me, it's really not much different. And hopefully your photographer is also able to work in all environments. Um, you are so welcome. So I think that that's pretty much going to be about it. So I do have a video coming out on Thursday about really hot and really cold weddings. Um, I honestly have no idea what I'm posting the following week because I'm feeling very uh, stuck on my ideas, but hopefully I'll come up with something that you guys want to see. Um, if you have any video requests, you're welcome to put them in right now and I will definitely add them to my list. Um, it's just, you know, I've done so many blogs over the last several years and so many videos now. I've done like over 140 videos. There comes a point where I just honestly, I'm like, I don't know what else to talk about. And then I find new things. I'm like, great, I'll talk about that. So um, if you guys do any suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope that this was helpful for you and um, that I was able to answer all of your questions, I think. Um, anyways, catch me on Thursday. It's not going to be live. That is not live at all. <laughs> it's going to be about the hot and cold weddings. And then the following Tuesday, hopefully something really exciting. So hope you guys have a great night and I'll see you next time. Bye.